Hello, and welcome to our April webinar, Templates Deep Dive. I'm Sarah Morales, and today we have with us George Preibel, also known as Kurt Bourne, joining us from the UK. Today, we're going to cover how to use, customize, and create templates on your wiki. At the end, we'll host a Q&A, so feel free to submit questions at any time. So to start, let's review what templates are, how they're used, and where you can find them on your wiki. Let's start by looking at a standard wiki page. Here's a screenshot of the Captain America page on the Marvel database wiki. You can see on the right, there is a section detailing facts and an image of Captain America. <clears throat> this blue colored box is a template and is used for all the characters within the Marvel wiki. The editors there add this to provide facts in a clean and concise fashion on each of the character pages. This style of templates is one that's very common on wikis and is called an info box. Many wikis use these for characters, episodes, and other topics that are helped by a standardized format. Templates are used for many other situations as well, including welcome messages, licensing information, user pages, and much, much more. The info box is designed and controlled by the info box template code, one that is standard for all characters on the Marvel wiki. Here you can see the code that controls this. Don't let this worry you yet, because we're going to dive deep into how to create something similar for your wiki. In essence, a template is a special type of page that has been designed so its content can be included in other pages. This helps to standardize what and how information is presented on your wiki pages. Since a given template can be included in many pages, it can help reduce duplication and promote a uniform style between pages. Here you can see another screenshot from Marvel. This time it's from the Iron Man page. This is using the same character info box as the Captain America page. So you can see the color, the design, and the basic content it displays is the same, but with the Iron Man specific details. There is an image, the character's real name, alias, and other parameters that have been defined by the Marvel community. Using templates lets you standardize content, design, size, placement, and much more. It also means that you, if you want to update any of these elements, you just need to update the template page and all the pages using that template will be updated. This saves a lot of time and is more efficient, allows you to keep more complicated code on the template page and keep your wiki pages less cluttered. When you hit edit and are using the visual editor, Templates are represented by green puzzle pieces. If you hover over this icon, the template it represents will load. The pop-up will show you the name of the template as well as a preview of its current state on the article. Template names begin with template colon, such as template colon character, which is also the URL where the template is pulled from. Here you can see we're on the Game of Thrones wiki on the Arya Stark article. There is an info box about Arya and the template is using the template character. If you would like to edit the template, you can click on the edit link on the bottom of the pop-up. Here you can see the same article, but now we're editing it in source mode, with the template information fully presented and editable. In source mode, you can tell it's a template because it starts with two curly brackets and then the name of the template. Here you can see that the first line contains curly bracket, curly bracket character, and then is followed by various details about Arya Stark. Each parameter is listed on a separate line and contains specific wiki text, which we'll dive a bit more into later. If you would like to add a template to an article from the visual editor, you can choose from one of four default choices provided in the right rail of the editor or search for others on your wiki by clicking the Add Other Templates link below. The list of four templates shown can be edited by an admin at MediaWiki colon editor dash template dash list. So if your community uses a template very frequently, it might be a good idea to add it directly to the editor here. So say for example, if your wiki contains spoilers, you might want to warn your audience prior. Many wikis put up a spoiler template to warn readers. Spoiler is a default template, so all you have to do is click add other templates and then type in the name of the template you want to use, as I did here with spoiler. Click the name and it will be automatically added to your editing window. When you hit publish, it will then be on the page. This template can be edited on its template page, so at template colon spoiler. 
You can go there to adjust what the spoiler text says, as well as the style of the template. If the template has parameter information, as in the example info box, a second dialog called the template editor will appear. This allows you to add specific content to the info box and get a visual representation before it's added to the article. The editor, this editor is also what appears when you click on the edit um, in that template pop-up in the visual editor. Here you can see an example I created for my Orchid Garden Wiki. I'm adding info box for the orchid type Vanda. I've added a title and image, have defined the image size, and I've included a variety of other information for the info box. I then clicked preview and saw how the template will appear. Once I've added all that I want, I clicked OK. The template will then be added to the edit page. You'll still need to click publish from within the editor to put the template on the article. So for to have it to be live, you need to make sure you hit OK and then save on the page. To edit the template again, using the template editor pop-up, simply go back into edit mode, hover over the puzzle piece, click on the edit link, and you'll be brought back to this template editor. If you're editing in source mode, you start with the curly bracket, curly bracket, followed by the template name. Then each corresponding parameter goes on a new line with a pipe at the start of the line. This tells the system to enter the information provided into, into the corresponding template line. So here you can see my info box for the Vanded Orchid, again, but in source mode. At the start is curly bracket, curly bracket, info box. And then on the next line, there's a pipe with the text box, box title following it. This is a line for the title of the info box. So after the statement box title, there's an equal sign after which you see the text, you would add the text you want to appear. So here I put the name of the orchid type Vanda. This is then followed by other parameters, including the image I want displayed and other details. You now may be wondering, how do I customize and build templates that are specific to my wiki? Well, to do that, I'm going to hand the, the mic over to George, who's going to walk you through how to do that. Hi, all. Uh, I'm George, though most people online know me as Kev Wen. Uh, I joined Wikia back in 2007 and was first a user, then admin of our wiki. I joined Wikia as staff in 2008, working on the product team, and now I am a member of the community support team. So templates are an area where we get a lot of questions. It's quite a deep subject, and we won't be able to cover everything, but I'll try and get through all the basics. So let's start with what comes as default on a new wiki. Today, when a wiki is created, we include a number of default pages. This includes quite a few template pages, some of which you can see listed here. These can be found by visiting the templates category on your wiki, or by filtering special all pages by the template namespace. These are generally basic templates to give you something to start with, and we highly recommend you customize them to match your wiki's topic and theme. Let's walk through editing a template. Anyone can use a template, and most of the time anyone can edit them, although heavily used templates are sometimes protected by our wiki's admins. To start, visit the template page. For most default templates on Wikia, you will see documentation below the template helping to explain how the template works. Here, we are looking at the default template for a character infobox, found on template colon infobox character with an example of how it would appear in an article on the right. What can you modify? There are two main areas, the design, which uses simple wiki text, HTML, and CSS, and the parameters. Parameters are what allow you to customize a template for the article it's placed on. For example, they can be used to define various aspects of a character's attributes or to choose a specific image. In this example here, you can see that the basic parameters for Infobox character include title, image, image caption, position, age, status, height, and weight. If we click Edit, we can now see the template code itself. The editor always uses source mode in the template namespace because the concept used in the visual editor simply makes, makes less sense here. Though this page may look complex, we will walk you through each line now so you're more comfortable when you see this on your own wiki. The first line we see begins the infobox. So let's review some terminology you'll see 
and cover which you should adjust and which you can simply leave be. The only include, which is highlighted in blue here, tells the software to only put a specific part of the template page on the article. Generally, you can uh, ignore this if it exists, and you don't need to add it if it doesn't. The curly bracket pipe, highlighted in orange, indicates that the infobox is made from a table, and this specific code tells the system that the table is starting. You can see its opposite at the other end of your infobox, that would be pipe curly bracket, which closes the table. Infoboxes often use tables, uh, which is fairly evident in their design, so they often have quite similar wiki text code. The class equals wikia dash infobox, which is highlighted in green, calls in the standard wikia CSS for infoboxes, giving the infobox a basic layout and theme. Some wikis apply specific CSS for specific templates, and they do so by adjusting which class is named. Whenever you see a class listed like this, it means the template is either calling CSS code from Wikia or from the wiki's own custom CSS. Next, you begin to see the parameters starting to be defined in the infobox, highlighted in orange. Again, this, uh, this infobox is made from a table, so you will see the wiki text for a table row followed by the parameter itself. You can recognize a parameter because it is contained within a set of three curly brackets. For example, title is a parameter here, along with image, uh, image caption, and more below. The other thing you can see on the infobox character parameters is a default setting. For example, so for example, writing curly bracket title pipe unknown, close brackets. This means that if you don't specify the title parameter when including the article, uh, you, including the template on an article, unknown will appear instead. Similarly, image width pipe 210 means that the default width of the image in a template will be 210 pixels wide. These are all defaults that can be adjusted locally on your wiki by simply editing the template. When you put a template on an article and write the various inputs, basically all that is happening is that it takes the infobox character page, puts it on the article, and replaces the stuff in the, in the triple brackets with the corresponding inputs that you have chosen. You can do a few different things with parameters. Infobox character uses named parameters. Essentially, this means that the parameter has a name, such as title, which is how you refer back to it when putting the template on an article. If you want to change the order of what appears in the infobox, all you have to do is change the order on the template page. Remember, all of these changes take place live, so it will affect articles using the template immediately. Here again is the default character infobox. You can see the parameters we just called out. The top unknown on the left is the title, which you can see has been replaced with Superman in the right example. Uh, the image is below, and then the remaining parameters include position, age, status, and so on have all been filled in. Most infoboxes are broken into sections such as name, vital statistics, and physical attributes. This helps to organize the infobox. Here you can see it, the code to create a section highlighted in green. The div with a class wrapped it around the section title tells the system to create a separator line above that name of a section. The start of the line cult span refers to how many columns are in that section. In this case, there are two the column with the labels on the left and the column with the character information on the right. The, the call span tells it tells the, the code that it should span both those columns. So here is the same slide again, and the arrows show you the separator line and the two column layout. The next row includes an if statement. If statements are something that a lot of bigger templates use because it lets you drastically alter how a template functions based on the inputs written on the, on the article page. For example, one use might be to hide a whole section of a template unless a certain input was defined. In this template, the effect is that if you don't write uh, an image caption input, uh, that whole table row is skipped. This helps to combat having to show blank cells or unknown if a parameter isn't defined. The basic form of an if statement is if something exists, then show this, something else, otherwise show something else. 
Uh, in this case, we have if uh, the image caption is defined, which is highlighted in blue, then it will show the section shown in orange. Uh, and if you haven't defined a caption, it will show the section in yellow, which is empty. To adjust a parameter name, simply adjust the text that is listed within the triple brackets as well as the label. So in the example here, if you wanted to change age to birth date, you adjust the text on the two lines that say age, highlighted in blue. If you would like a parameter removed, you will need to remove the start of the table row, so the pipe dash, along with the name and the triple brackets. So here, if you wanted to remove age, you would remove all of the, the lines highlighted in blue. And if you'd like to add a parameter, simply copy all three lines and add them in the location you would like. And then again, adjust the name. So you would copy the three lines highlighted in blue and then adjust the text to say maybe family. If you want to add more color to your infobox, you can via the use of more CSS or inline styles. We'll cover inline styles in this webinar because they are simpler to explain. Almost every aspect of an infobox can be adjusted. The style of the box, the style of the text, the background, the size, placement, and more. Each element can be controlled on the template page and can be applied to a particular section or the entire template. It's important to keep in mind that templates are meant to be included on many pages across your wiki, so remember this as you customize your style. To change the look of the template, you will want to add style elements within the section of the template you want to modify. To apply it to the entire Infobox character table, add it to the first line of the table where the uh, wikia-infobox class is written. For example, here you can see on the first line the class equals wikia-infobox followed by the style definition, style equals background color uh, ddeeff. This defines the color for the background of the infobox. The color code is a hex code for light blue. And you can find a big list of corresponding hex codes on our uh, color help page. Here, you can see the results of adding the color style. The infobox background has become light blue. Individual rows can also be customized in a similar fashion by applying styling to those specific rows. For example, you can change the title text blue with this code, style equals color P366FF. And the result can be seen on the right. The uh, unknown text is now written in bright blue. If you want to make further line style adjustments, you can just keep adding attributes on the same table row in the infobox code. Here you can see for the title row style, we have now adjusted the text alignment to center and increased the font size to 250% of standard. These adjustments could be applied to all elements of the infobox and do that, you would just add them to the first infobox line along with the background color. Again, if you just wanted to uh, make some row specific adjustments, such as for the image, you just add the adjustments to the line that controls images. Infoboxes and templates come in all shapes and sizes on Wikia. Some wikis use the default with small adjustments and others make more major changes. And here you can see a couple of examples. Here we have a weapons template from WowWiki showing Sulfurus and the old and young man templates from RuneScape Wiki. RuneScape Wiki have done a great job of actually allowing you to click a button and see the characters in the older and younger states. This is quite an advanced customization, but a really fun one to discover on our site. Some wikis have even modified their infoboxes to look completely different. For example, the Arrested Development Wiki uses a banner design to great effect, uh, such as seen on this Tobias Funke article. It has a large high resolution screen capture of the show as the background with a semi-transparent banner across the bottom showing the basic details about that character. We have mostly talked about infobox templates so far, but there are of course many other kinds. Another popular type of template is a navigation box, which is generally used at the bottom of pages to aid navigation 
between related articles. For example, Fallout Wiki uses nav boxes to make it, make it easy to switch between major locations from the various games. Wikis that have a wide variety of sources might have a template that helps refer to the various sources. For example, Scrubs Wiki has a template simply called L, which is used to replace the short name for an episode, such as 3x19, uh, which is the 19th episode of the third season, with the full name of the episode, uh, which was my choosiest choice of all. One of the great benefits of templates is their amazing flexibility. I talked about if statements earlier, but there are many other related abilities. For example, other special codes can let you change how a template works based on whether an input matches one of several specific choices, or uh, to check whether an article actually exists. Collectively, these are uh, generally called parser functions, and you can read more about them on our parser functions help page. Given all this wondrous variety, the resulting templates can sometimes be overwhelming, overwhelming to new users, and sometimes even the very experienced. However, there are some fairly simple things one can do to try and make sure more people can read and understand a template. Good documentation is probably the easiest and best improvement one can make. You could either use the template colon documentation setup that comes with new wikis, or simply include some text within no include tags on the template page. Anything contained within this tag won't be used when the template is put on an article but it will still be shown on the template page itself. Using line breaks and comments to help separate sections can make the wiki text code much easier to read. Text contained within the comment markers will only ever show when viewing the wiki text of that page, so it means you can use them to add some documentation within the template code itself. More generally, it is also a good idea to try and keep templates fairly simple in scope. For example, it's probably best to have a separate Infobox character and Infobox episode template. While you could use advanced code to combine the two of them, the resulting wiki text might be much harder for a user to read and understand. Another pitfall is using lots of templates within templates, and we call this nesting templates. While there are sometimes some very good reasons for doing this, uh, doing it too much can make the results really difficult to follow as the user can end up having to try and understand five separate templates at the same time rather than just the one that they're currently looking at. And another top tip is to try and test big template changes on a separate page. That way, if you happen to accidentally break something, it won't affect all of the articles using that template. Thank you, George. Um, and for anyone listening, this is actually recording, so we don't have any live Q&As. But I wanted to, George, if you just have any final advice um, for folks uh, to, to let us know if any just final tips or thoughts on, on templates. Uh, yes. Um, one thing that comes to mind is that uh, there can sometimes be a tendency to put a lot of templates at the uh, top of a page. Um, and that's something it's, it's quite a good idea to avoid uh, because when someone comes to your wiki, you don't want them to, to see a whole block of templates that don't necessarily tell them anything before they can actually read your uh, article itself. Yes. Um, yeah. The other big thing, too, is when um, folks come to edit your wikis, you just also sometimes want to be careful because having lots of complex template code right at the top can also get a little confusing. Um, we also recommend if there are very commonly used info boxes, you likely do want to protect those just to admin so that, you know, if someone were to come and change, um, you know, it doesn't affect hundreds of pages on your wiki. Um, if you have any further Q&A, link to this page where you're watching it is a blog post where you can post follow-up questions, so please do so. And I also just want to let you know about a couple of resources that exist. Uh, we do have a basic um, help template page at help templates. Um, we also, on the template page itself on community template info box, there is documentation uh, about using it and adjusting it. And um, a more advanced step, which George mentioned at the end, are parser functions, which you can also see listed for the help page here. 
I also strongly encourage you to visit our community forum. So special forum on Community Central. There's lots of folks who are really highly skilled in in using templates and just post a question there. And many people are more than happy to help. So feel free to visit Community Central um, for more help and support there. I want to thank George for uh, joining us for the webinar and this recording. And hopefully all of you have happy editing and have a great uh, editing experience. Take care.